Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm Sally. I work on OpenShift. I've been on a few different teams within OpenShift uh, for the past uh, almost five years now. Yeah, I'm Urvashi Monani, and I'm a software engineer on the OpenShift uh, Node team. It used to be the Runtimes team. Uh, so I work with the container tools that you all probably know and love, Cryo, Podman, Builder, etc. <laughs> Uh, yep, and so we're here to talk about CI/CD. Although we are not, not experts on CI/CD, CI -CD. <laughs> as non-experts of CI/CD. Yeah. Um, All right. So we sort of came up with the list of ten reasons of why we are here doing this talk. Um, the first one is we were very interested in how the CI/CD infrastructure works for OpenShift, um, but we really had didn't have that much knowledge. So what's a uh, Better way to learn than make yourself give a talk at a conference. Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, we wanted to visit Brno in January. <laughs> Said nobody <No>. ever. <laughs> um, uh, always love the free swag that speakers get. The, yep, the pretty to... awesome hoodies that we're getting this year. Yep, make a new closet in my house for them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, social media. You all know if you give a talk at a conference, you're like famous on Twitter for ten minutes. So. Selfie, Selfie time. time. <laughs> Don't have a one. <laughs> um, and we also oh, wanted yeah. to sort of clear up what CICD actually stands for. There are two different um, options out there. I say continuous integration, continuous deployment. Uh, deli con uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> one of those two. Maybe, uh, isn't there another D2 that we were? Development? Development. development. <laughs> continuous development. That's it. We don't know. <laughs> uh, free food. Yay. Even more free, free food. food. And free cups, because I, I couldn't think of anything else, so now I got free cups. Um, my, my, my New England Patriots lost Tom Brady and a few weeks ago, so they're not in the Super Bowl this year, and I just had to come and drown my sorrows with some good, cheap Czech beer. <laughs> um, and an excuse to brag about how amazing our OpenShift CI is. Yeah, that's, that's, we're, we're getting to the real point now. Um, yeah. it, it is. We're actually serious. <laughs> Um, so one of the main reasons is that it's pretty fascinating how big complex projects like Kubernetes and OpenShift actually get compatible code in on a daily basis, um, especially since they have so many different moving parts, different repos, they have over 100 contributors all around the world. So we wanted to sort of share an overview of how the CI/CD infrastructure is actually very important in getting a stable release out. Yeah, um, maybe many of you have, have never thought about how this happens. Um, there are about 100 repositories that make up an OpenShift release. Um, just a few years ago, everything was in that single repository, OpenShift Origin, and same with Kubernetes. And over the past few years, uh, everything's become distributed, and uh, uh, hundreds of repos make up those projects. Um, how do you ensure that one component's not breaking another? Um, backwards compatibility, um, all of those are really hard problems. And what we hope you'll take away from our talk, um, respect for your CI CD team. Um, for us, it's, it's OpenShift CI CD. Um, hug them today. <laughs> Yeah, um, we will, you will get an overview of how our CICD system works, um, especially how it has evolved over the years as the project itself has evolved. Uh, it's uh, perhaps the most important part of any project. It's what drives uh, that project toward the goal of a stable release. Um, and you will also understand, like, I mean, hopefully take away how important this is, uh, and also, get the idea, I mean, understand that like having CI jobs running is actually your team's job. Like the CI team will just give you an infrastructure that can actually run those jobs for you, but you have to create those jobs, maintain it, keep updating it as your code changes with it. Um, and actually yesterday we found a pretty big bug in our code and realized that we didn't have a CI job for it, which is pretty ironic because I was giving a talk today <laughs> on why CICD is important. So learn to lesson. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the CI CD team will happily run your jobs and fail them a hundred times. Uh, it's not their job to fix, fix those failures. It's your job to know your project and to fix them. Yeah. Um, and automation is essential uh, in a project like Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, lots of YAML involved, lots of jobs to run, lots of platforms, lots of cloud providers. Um, automation is essential. Yep. Um, so let's start simple. 
there are two main moving parts to the CICD infrastructure that we have, or the CI infrastructure actually. Um, so we have Prowl, which is a Kubernetes-based AD system um, with GitHub automation. Uh, basically, it just runs your tests in the container in a pod. Uh, and CI operator enhances Prow, just um, adds on to it to actually fill up the needs of the OpenShift CI. Yep, um, Prow uh, Kubernetes was Kubernetes solution to their yeah. CI, and uh, we took that and opinionated it and made it work for OpenShift too. Yeah. Uh, so CI operator was a tool developed by our test platform team just to add automation around uh, executing Prow jobs. Um, it's a super cool tool. I believe Steve Kuznetsov pretty much developed it. Um, is it a Kubernetes operator? No, it's not. It was developed uh, just before Kubernetes operators became a thing. Uh, so the name is a little bit confusing, um, but it's, it operates CI, but it's not like a reconciling to a known good state Kubernetes operator. Yeah. So Sally, yeah. if Prow is deployed at Kubernetes, and OpenShift is Kubernetes, does that mean that OpenShift CI can run on an OpenShift cluster? Yes, and it does, and not too many people know about that. So that was the main goal of ours, to let you all know that we run our OpenShift CI on OpenShift. Mind blown. <laughs> and now we're finally ready to dive in, dive in and discuss how this all works. Yep. Oh, wait, <laughs> let's digress. Um, a little background information. Our goal here is to come up with an OpenShift release, or you know, for any CI, it's that that stable release. Um, so, what is an OpenShift release? Um, yeah. So here you can see a snippet of what the OpenShift release looks like. Um, it's basically an index of image digests that are known good tested together. Um, so we have over almost about a hundred of these images, which sort of just represent the different components that make up OpenShift. Yeah, that's a shortened list, um, yeah. but you can see with any release, you can run that command OC admin release info and then pass it the name of the release, and you will see a list of all of the components that make up an OpenShift release, and each of those components lives in a separate GitHub repo, and those are all um, included in our CI and tested with every single PR of every single one of those repos, um, and how does that all happen? Well, uh, with every merge, a new release is um, created, and that release includes 99 components that are known good with your one component that's questionable. Um, from that release, clusters are launched, tests are executed. If they're all good, they all pass, then back in your PR and GitHub, you'll get the all green. Um, if you have all of those proper labels, like um, approved, looks good to me, and, and such, um, it will move to what Prow calls a tide pool. And a tide pool is a small group of PRs that will merge together. Uh, so that small tide pool, say there's three or four PRs that are ready to merge. Um, Prow will execute further tests, uh, create a new release with those four changes, if it's four PRs, uh, run the tests again. If those are all good, that's when Prow will auto-merge those changes. Um, once, that, once those changes are official, a new release gets published to our release page. We have a release page that you can check out um, throughout the day. Uh, yeah, uh, Go back to the index yeah. there. Yeah, throughout the day, we're, um, we're building new releases every few hours. And with every release, if you click on one, you can get a change log and uh, go down to the four fours, I think. Okay. Yeah, right down here. Yeah, yeah click on any one of those. And it, ta it takes a minute for the change log to pop up, so we might not see it, but it will reference exactly every PR that's in that particular release. Now, once a day, we get a nightly release, and those nightly releases are passed on to QE, further testing, further periodic jobs. Um, with a wave of a magic wand, then uh, finally that release gets um, released to the customer and public. And that's, that's, that's how it works, but it's all orchestrated through an OpenShift cluster running our CI. All right, this is not loading, I think, the internet. Oh, yeah. that's all right. Yep. 
back yeah. to the slides. So uh, now we're really ready to dive in. Yeah. Like how, let's, let's walk through a typical workflow of a job and you'll get a sense of what's happening in RCI. Yeah. So with CI Operator, we have something called config files, which basically is the definition of how you want to build your image and what tests you want to run. Um, so every time you open a PR to a certain repo, you want to build an image that incorporates your changes so that it can be injected into the release image that will be tested using, um, that will be tested on all the tests that you have enabled. Um, so this part is a small snippet of what the, um, the, the code looks like for when you want to add, like what images you want to build. So the build route basically, it's a way of telling um, the CR operator what, like, to get your source code into this, um, to build that. Uh, the base images are the building blocks, uh, so you can use this in future, like you can do a from base, like how you do in Docker files. Um, and then the images part here is just link, tell your CI operator where your Docker file lives and how to build your um, source code. So if your source code needs to be built, if you need to create an RPM for it, for example, that needs to be injected, then you specify the path here, you tell it which Docker file to, like. And the Docker file actually lives in your repo. It doesn't live in the test. Yeah, cra crafting that Docker file is usually uh, like half of the half yeah. of the challenge of um, getting your CI going. It's basically how would I run this locally? Mm -hmm. We'll put that in a in container because in our CI everything runs in OpenShift pods. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other part that makes up the config file are the tests that you want to enable. So every time you open a PR to a repo, you will see a bunch of tests start running. Um, so this is where you define which tests you want to run. They sort of gate your changes, and based on whether they pass or not, um, your changes get merged in. Um, so you can define different tests. You can have unit tests. You can have end-to-end -end tests. You can have integration tests. This is where you do it. You can also, if your tests need to be run on a uh, need to launch an external cluster on a different cloud provider, it's for example OpenShift, and we want to test on AWS, you can specify where to do that there with AWS. Like, and, and we'll talk about this a bit more yeah, as we go. This is just a quick overview of that. Um, so with every config file uh, we have, we get jobs. Um, there are three different types of jobs that you can have. So we have the pre-submit jobs, which basically convert your config file um, and creates jobs for building those images and for running the test that you have defined. Um, so uh, and then the post submit jobs is a job for creating the promote images, which can then get tagged into the image streams. And eventually, the other um, tests, the other tests in the whole infrastructure, can use your image to test, basically. Uh, and then the periodic jobs are just um, a job with a cron element. They run as often as you specify that you want them. So if you have certain features in your project that you always want to re um, test, regardless of whether you've opened a PR or not to make changes to it, this will run as often as you specify to it. So for OpenShift, we run upgrade jobs, we run jobs in a disconnected environment and all. Yeah, those pre-submit jobs are all the jobs that happen before your PR merges. merges yeah. uh, so I wanna pause real quick here because um, a few weeks ago, I was working with um, Federico Paulini, uh, another Red Hatter, and uh, we were working through a CI issue for his team. And through that uh, few days of you know really working together on Slack, he um, pinged me afterward, and he's like, you know, thanks so much. We got this figured out. I ended up giving a presentation to my whole team on what I learned about our CI, and it went over really well. Everybody really liked it, so thank you. And I said, awesome, because I'm giving a presentation in a few weeks at DevConf, and uh, can I pilfer your slides because I haven't started mine. And he said, sure, sure thing, no problem. And I said, I'll give you a shout out during my talk. So this is one of the nicer slides that he made. And um, I basically you know, started my slide deck, our slide deck with, with his slides. So. so this slide is showing a typical workflow of, um, what, of a job. Uh, it starts with a GitHub repo. Uh, any of our, in OpenShift we're talking about a component it was part of the release. That config file we talked about, um, the config file generates job YAML that lists all of the, the jobs that need to execute. Um, from that, from that job, job YAML file, hap the jobs happen. Uh, there's the unit test that is just start a container that has my source code in it. Uh, enter the directory in my source code and run make test. It's that simple. Then there's the more complicated jobs that say, um, okay, uh, take my source code, uh, launch an external cluster, you know, keep my cube config in the OpenShift pod in the CI cluster, execute, go into my source code directory and execute my end-to-end -end tests against that cluster. And then there's other tests that say, um, 
execute the centralized whole big test suite of Overshift Kubernetes on an external cluster with my change. So that's basically what happens. Uh, and so let's let's go back to the CI config yeah. and um, talk a little bit more about the images. Yeah, we'll talk a little more about the image builds. Um, so yeah, so there are different kinds of images that you can build with that. So the first one is a source image, which basically gets your source code and builds an image using that source code. Uh, so build root, so there are two ways you can define this right now. So you can use an image stream tag. So let's say your source code doesn't need, you don't need really to install anything new to it. You just need to pick it up and pull it in. Um, you can define that with an image stream, st image stream tag um, uh, using, under the build root here. Uh, but let's say that you, um, you have to like install different things. You have to probably create an RPM from it or something and, and then and, like, inject that. Then you can specify a path to the Docker file which lives in your repository. You have the steps in the Docker file that actually um, go through and build your image for you. Did I miss anything, Sally? I don't think so. I yeah. think you're good. <laughs> uh, then the base images was that top section. That just says, it like declares a, an image that you'll use down to build your images. So if I say I'm, my base image is um, OS, then down in the image build section, I can reference that OS image. Um, and that becomes like the from statement in the doc file. Yeah. Um, you have some special images also that can be built from the source image. So um, you might want to create a binary image or a test binary image to run, like for example, um, your unit tests or end-to-end -end tests within that you need a source code for. Um, so you can add that to your build binary commands here and you can just basically the make build is like a command that lives in your repository in your make file. So you can link that over here and when it starts a test, it will do this and run those tests for you. Yep. Um, and what we're showing here are just snippets of that config yeah. file. The config file is like the central part of C CI. So the last one, the target images, of course, is um, there's a Docker file that lives in my repository. Uh, build it, and out will come my component image. And you know that's the image that goes into the release. Um, so those are the target images. You can also cherry pick from other images. Mo I think most people just have a Docker file, though, yeah. in their repository. Yeah, um, and then we also have this field called tag specification. Um, so basically when you start your job, you can see there's so many components that come together to actually, in a release image, to actually finally imitate a cluster and run your test on it. So when you specify, for example, 4.3, then um, you're telling your CI infrastructure basically that when you st start testing my changes, I want you to pick all the images that have the 4.3 tag on it. So you're specifying which version you want to pick up. Yeah, and the pr uh, promotion section says I need this image that I'm billing to be available um, to the rest of CI. It could be because I, it's going to be part of the release. It could be um, if I'm building the CLI image, other tests are going to need that newest, latest, greatest CI, um, OC. So um, make that image available to all the other templates and jobs. Yeah, so you promote the image, basically. Mm -hmm. And once the image is promoted, it can be referenced with the um, underscore image underscore image name. Yeah. Yeah, so this was sort of more um, deep dive into what the config file is and when you put everything together, this is kind of a config file you'll have. Um, you have your base images, your build root, which specifies your source code, where you want to pick that from, um, your tags, your promotion, and then finally all the tests you want to run. Yep. You can and add as many tests as you want. And you all can check these out too. Um, I, I think I listed it, but it's openshift slash release slash CI operator. Yeah. And then you'll see the jobs directory, the config directory. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's talk a bit about the different kind of tests that we can run. Um, so the first one is the unit tests. Uh, they just run inside a pod in a cluster. So <clears throat> you don't really need to launch an external cluster for this. You can just define that here and it will, when, when it picks your source code and builds from it, it can just execute the unit test command you usually have in your um, repository. So you can, you can also do like a hack slash run just, unit test. Or yeah, just test, whatever, you know, command. whatever command you do locally yeah. with your repository. And then the end-to-end um, the -end tests are tests that are really specific to your component. They don't really have to be run by all of the components, and those would live in your repository. So um, for, for this type of test, you would want to, uh, any, any, te any test that launches a cluster, you need to start with a template. We'll get to that a little bit later. But um, this template is um, incorporating this, your source code 
into the template because you're going to need to CD into your repository and run like make test E2E once a cluster is launched and running. Um, so the, the template is um, um, that OpenShift installer source that is mapped to a, per <coughs> a particular template. And um, again, we'll talk about that a little later, but the templates live in OpenShift release CI operator templates. And then, oh yeah, that's it. Oh, did you do the periodic job? I think it, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was being <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, so another one is the periodic test. As I mentioned before, it's just jobs with a cron element. You can see how you can define the cron element in the YAML there. Um, it will just run as often as you tell it to. And then the, the final kind of class of tests is the acceptance test. So the, these are the really um, important tests for each release component component of the release because they um, launch a cluster and then uh, execute the whole conformance suite and acceptance suite for Kubernetes and OpenShift against that cluster which was built with your change. Yeah. Uh, and this is a slightly different temp template. The OpenShift underscore installer maps to a slightly different template and it uh, doesn't have to include your source code. That's, that's the difference. Um, because these tests are centrally located um, for all uh, components to run and they're actually incorporated into the release itself as a separate image, the test image. Yeah, so basically every repository that makes up OpenShift um, have have these tests enabled just to ensure that when you add one small thing into one, you don't break everything else. So these, they, they're actually the gating jobs, like if this don't pass, your change is not getting in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's wire it all up together now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so once you've written your config file, you have defined how you want your images built, what tests you want to run, you are ready to go on. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. We need to, you were, we said something about that job YAML. Where oh, does that? Right, get, yeah. Know? Now I have to write my job YAML, which we didn't tell you guys how to do. And it's really long and it's a lot of YAML. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, um, the CI team has made a very simple command called make jobs, which auto generates your job YAML for you. As All long the, as you have <laughs> your config file written correctly. Yeah, all the automation that has um, been uh, given to us by our pl test platform team is the result of us like bugging them about how to do stuff and they're like I'm sick of telling you how to do this here is a tool just run it yeah yeah That's and the job all automation should happen yeah and the job YAML is also pretty complicated like it defines yeah. every like all the environment variables for each job all the different flags you need to oh, run right, them right. etc yeah. so it's a pretty long file that you can easily mess up if you have to write it by scratch by yeah, hand. some some things that like maybe you wouldn't think about is the credentials for the all of those cloud um, providers. How do how does the OpenShift pod get those? They live in a config map or a secret on the OpenShift CI cluster, mm -hmm. and they're shared with um, the pod. And all of that kind of stuff is defined in uh, the job YAML. Um, different M variable M, M variables. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure you're all here thinking, well, Sally and she great, like, I guess I can write a config job, yeah, a config write, file write now, it's so file. simple. Yeah. yeah. There's um, docs. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily you don't have to. So we, the CI team also gave us a new command, which is pretty recent, called make new repo, which actually has an interactive step-by-step -step guide on how to, that asks you a question, and based on your answers, it generates the config file for you. Yeah, well. the config file plus the job YAML, Plus the um, Prowl plugins. I didn't really talk about the Prowl plugins, but they're just a list of plugins that map to um, GitHub uh, ac GitHub actions or yeah. comments, really. So the LGTM, the um, approve, the assign, the OK to test, all of those are Prowl plugins. There's even a meow. If you go into a Prowl PR and you type slash meow, you'll get like a cat picture, I think. Um, there's a few like little uh, Easter eggs there. Yeah. Um, but they are all also, so when you run make new repo, it will populate every single um, plugin for you and you can go in and fine tune if you don't, yeah. you know, if you're not like cool and you don't want the meow plugin, you can yeah. delete it. Yeah, the, the CI team pr pretty much got tired of everyone asking them yeah. how to write a config file. So they just created a step-by-step -step interactive way for us to do it. Yeah. 
why is this not working? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so the last and final piece of this, putting it all together, is we have everything we need. We've got our job YAML ready to execute, but let's talk about those templates. Um, anytime you have a, a job that needs to launch an external cluster, that uses a template. Yeah, so a template essentially is just for definitions that um, tell the CI infrastructure how to launch these clusters. Um, it creates different pods uh, and containers based on like different pods and containers for building your images, um, for like setting up an external cluster, for actually running those tests against that external cluster that you set up. Um, yes. It has the different volume mounts to share files. Like usually in all the, um, the tests, we need the OC binary to be shared across all the containers, so it injects that in. So it's just a definition of how to run. Yeah, and it, and it ejects the OC binary that was latest and greatest built from our CI by using, remember I showed you test underscore CLI, um, image underscore CLI yeah. um, as a, an init container or volume mounted, um, and then OC is available to the to the to uh, every container in the pod. And then the other container is the setup container, is what has the OpenShift installer binary. Um, side note, the OpenShift installer binary is actually an image that is included in the release itself. I think that's super cool. I don't know if you all know that. Um, but the installer itself is packaged with the release. So um, the setup container just runs that OpenShift installer and launches uh, whatever cluster you tell it to launch, whether it's GCP, AWS, whatever. Um, then there's um, like a marker file and the test container just waits until it sees that the cluster was launched successfully. Um, once it sees, once that pops up, it sees that the cluster's up, then the test container kicks in and starts running all of the tests. The cube config is shared um, via a volume mount in a, share, a temp shared directory. And uh, it can just, from the OpenShift pod, run tests against the external cluster. And then if anything goes wrong along the way, or if everything is done, the teardown cluster is just waiting to kick into action and yeah. uh, run the destroy cluster command. Yeah, one more thing the teardown um, part does before it destroys the cluster, if your tests fail, it gathers a bunch of logs, we call it the must gather, which um, help you debug what the issue was. Um, so yeah, there, it, it also snapshots oh. like what well, the YAMLs, were, all the YAMLs that were used for the operators and everything and the logs associated oh, with them. Yeah, the thing is not working. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so, so there, there, that's the troubleshooting. We need yeah. lots of feedback from all of these tests. And um, it is a lot of logs to go through. <laughs> but it, it, what, what they do is enable us to quickly um, pinpoint what's gone yeah. wrong, what we broke, what is broken in CI. Um, you know, once in a while, um, Clayton breaks everything, and, <laughs> and it's not our code, yeah. and we got to go tell him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I did do that. And we all freak out. <laughs> yeah, um, so the different types of jobs usually give you feedback. So for pre-submit jobs, um, the, pro the bot will be commenting on your PR. Um, so if your test fails, it will be like, test fail. It will give you a link on how to get to the must gather logs. You can go there, look at the artifacts directory get all the information you need to get to debug it. Um, they, uh, we have Prometheus alerts also that can be created and send you messages on Slack. Um, and as our tools have developed and as our test, test grid has expanded, we, uh, we also have a, a website where you can go and enter any um, error string that you're seeing. And I'll, it will, I'll just, yeah, I will just go there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it will list all the different jobs that failed with the similar error or the same error actually in the past like few hours, days, et cetera. Yeah, so this is just a service that uh, the test platform provided us um, basically because we needed it um, because uh, we'd be, you know, one, and one person in one repo like, hey, my, my job failed for this reason. It's not related to my PR. And someone else is, is on Slack being like, hey, my job failed. Like, what's going on? This yeah. has nothing to do with my code. And then a third person's like, hey, my job failed. What's, what, <laughs> this has nothing to do with my code. So you can go to, um, um, this simple UI and type any error string and it will pop out um, how many times within the past day, two days, weeks, hours, um, that failure has um, happened in our CI. And you can quickly uh, determine if it's just yeah. a flake, if, if, it's, if it's the only one in your PR, then you probably broke it. Yeah. Um, we also have another tool that also sort of extrapolates into like a graph to show you the number of jobs oh yeah, that failed. Oh yeah, lots of pretty same. graphs and test graph. grids yeah. and yeah, crazy. Yeah. Again, that's Clayton and Steve. Only the experts that can understand them. <laughs> uh, so no, wrong. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Do you mind? This? Oh yeah, we wanted to show you what actually the job looks like. Yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> is this is one of my PRs. I um, in GitHub I did slash retest about half an hour ago because I wanted to be able to show you. Um, here is um, my namespace. I'll just show you all the namespaces real yeah. quick. Uh, maybe not so quick. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. No, I shouldn't have. Okay. So um, yeah. Well. Let's go back to the slides and we'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so just ways to help. Feedback and lots of feedback. Mm -hmm. And the artifact uh, directory is um, a shared a vo a volume mount in the pod running in OpenShift. Um, eventually, that just gets shared to your um, pull request in the Prow UI. And uh, it has all of the logs and everything you could want to troubleshoot. Yeah. Yeah, so some more troubleshooting. Um, you can, whenever you open a PR to a repo with a new job, like you're adding a new job that starts rehearsal jobs that actually runs the jobs to test if it works fine. Um, you also, like the, the, console we, the console we just showed you, it's this, this website. It's basically our internal CI um, cluster that you can go to and whenever you start a job, it creates a namespace with all the jobs for you and you can, only you can go and see them, no yeah, one else. Yeah, you're it's given the, to your the right account. RBAC yeah. to um, access that, but yeah. at, as a PR owner, you're the admin of that particular RBAC namespace. Yeah. So if you're collaborating with somebody, you can give them access to your PR. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys can go and look at the pod logs. There's a, you can actually just um, access the terminal of any of the pods, and mm -hmm. you can run OC commands to see how what your cluster is doing. Yeah. Um, you can check for, if you're, if you're configuring a job, you might have to place a file somewhere on the on your pod and um, you can check that it's there because sometimes the paths get wonky and you have to figure all that out when you're making a Docker file. So. Yeah, yeah. And if your um, job also starts an external clus another cluster to run more um, end to end tests, you can also get onto that cluster to see what's going on if your tests are not working as expected. Yep. So maybe we should go back and see if it's loaded. Ah! The internet's not working here for some reason. Darn it. I really wanted to show you this. <laughs> Yeah, I um, could I could run OC commands um, on my terminal to yeah, show them. Yeah, yeah. let's All try right. the slides and we can do that. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so these are some resources uh, for you guys if you wanna if you wanna go check it out. Um, there are a lot of there's a lot of good documentation on everything. Um, it can be a bit daunting, but. When there are a lot of examples, and you can once you start going through them, it all makes sense. And if you have any questions, just don't ask us because we're not <laughs> we're not the experts here. We're just <laughs> we just use it. We we're we're at the mercy of RCI, just like you all are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's some useful Slack channels too, um, ping and mailing lists. Uh, and yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. So Thank um, you. yeah, we've all we've all been frustrated with CI and have babysat. Uh, we call it like babysitting CI, yeah. where we're just sitting there hitting retest because there's a flake. Or, but uh, what you don't want to do is hit the force merge button, um, because uh, with such a distributed project, that can really wreak havoc on a release, yeah. and it has like many, many times. Yeah. So you have to be patient and just work through the CI problems, and wait for the wait for the all clear before yeah. and let let just let the Robots do their it. job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's just see if it's. If oh yeah. Can. There you go. Oh cool. Okay. So, so here, every time you, every time a trigger, prow triggers a job, um, your namespace is created. Yeah. So these are all the namespaces. Those, those are all just like community namespaces. Yeah. But this is the CI op is what. Um, so here, go to the pods, yeah. yeah. So here are all the pods that ran. Um, the one released latest is where the release image was created with my change. Yeah. Uh, the um, the cluster cube controller manager operator, that, that built my new cluster cube controller operator image. And um, those two are those special the images. Source build yeah. and the binary build. So go into the E2E AWS is the gating job for all of our OpenShift repos. And um, if you go into the logs, logs, yeah, sorry. There's a drop down. And for all of you guys who maybe are in OpenShift, you might not know this. So it's really useful to be able to debug your PRs by doing this. Um, 
these are the four containers in the pod. So if you go to the setup container, can you do that, Arushi? Thanks. And you go to the logs, which not might, available. Oh, they're not available, but all you would see was the output of the OpenShift install. And it would say, you know, install complete, log into the cluster using this password. Um, and then the teardown hasn't happened yet? No, I think it's just the... And then the test container still, um, yeah. is what you'll see the output of all of the tests just spewing out. Um, but it's slow. Yeah. But that, and then you can go into a terminal. And here, will, will you hold that? So oh, it's, oh, it's done, so I can't. Yeah. The, the one, once the tests are done, but I was going to go into the terminal, terminal and type like OC get cluster version, and you would see that my, you know, it's accessing my, ex, the, the cluster is external and GCP or AW, oh, AWS. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, is there anything else we wanted to show them? It's a pretty UI to see how all your tests are running. <laughs> yeah, actually, let me see in my, this is a very storied PR. See, it hasn't, um, the, the results of my tests haven't come in yet, but it looks like everything is green. So Mache, uh, you can release that hold on this <laughs> VR and we can merge it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so all these jobs you see here are the jobs that are crea um, created from your pre-submit jobs. So, these so are the here, ones you yeah, find. this morning yeah. I, I checked it and um, my E2E AWS job failed and I looked in the logs and it was some like Terraform, uh, some some Terraform thing that had nothing to do. That means that uh, like AWS crapped out on yeah. us, basically. Uh, so that so that's why I retested it right before we came. Like the Wi-Fi is crapping out on us right now. Yes. <laughs> so I think that is it. Yeah. Wait, how are we for time? Yeah. Are we short? I don't know. Where's? Are we good? Yeah. Oh, questions? Anyone? Yeah. That's all. Thank you. How many of you knew about OpenShift CI coming in here? Anyone? How, did, how many knew that like, it runs on OpenShift? Yay! And uh, um, how many have been like, really frustrated with your <laughs> CI because of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. How many have experienced the, ra the Clayton break? Yay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Kuznetsov is amazing. He pretty much, he and Clayton uh, really grew our CI to what it is. And yeah. it's awesome. So thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Oh yeah, so Prow, if you have any kind of Kubernetes cluster, you can deploy Prow. And you can, you can go to our uh, repos and check out how we have everything set up. And you can use that to set up your own CI if you'd like. Um, and the CI operator is, lives in another repo. It's like OpenShift slash CI tools, I think. Yeah. Um, everything is available for you to look look at. Um, did we say, um, you know the release page I showed you, you can go and check out all of our releases, all of the PRs that are currently in the release. But uh, OKD, there's also a OKD okay, yeah. release page. Uh, I don't have it. But uh, on that page, you can pull down the images and, and get those are our community images, OKD. Yeah. First off, thanks for doing this presentation. Oh my gosh, it's thank you. Fantastic. Oh, thank yay. You. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows 10% of how it works, mm -hmm. um, and nobody has the whole picture, but it's yeah. fantastic. Thank oh my gosh, questions. thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Say again. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we use all um, cloud providers. So um, our customers run OpenShift on all different cloud mm -hmm. providers, on premise, on bare metal. So uh, I just showed you a few examples. There's GCP, AWS, Azure, um, bare metal. Uh, yeah, so we test them all. We test them all, yeah. 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 
Right. Uh, once your pull request is green and has all the labels, it doesn't merge right away. It's pretty quickly, but um, there's a, t a prow tide pool that will merge a few together. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the question was, um, once your PR passes all the tests, it doesn't merge right away. Um, it, it waits for, an, for other PRs. Why is that? Um, it's a good question. I think just to group them together. Um, so they go on a, yeah, I think yeah. the, the title basically just puts them in a group and retests everything that wants to be merged again. And then once everything is fine and passes, then it merges. So like it, it, it tests a bunch of PRs together again. Yeah, not, not a whole lot, but like three or four. And three, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not exactly sure of the reasoning, but yeah. um, it does ensure that um, a current change to this, re this com component isn't going to break a, like the same time change to another component. Mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't have been caught. I think that is it. Yeah, that wouldn't have been caught by just testing the 99 good ones with mine. Mm -hmm. Now I have to test the 96 good ones with the four questionable ones together yeah. to make sure those new changes haven't broken each other. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a prow thing. It's called the tide pool. Uh, so prow um, is located in Kubernetes slash test infra. And um, actually, Steve Kuznetsov is the main contributor to Prow also. He's a Red Hatter. Yeah. I think that's all. All right. Uh, if you guys are in Overshift or Red Hat and you have questions, you can find us on Slack. Yeah. Um, lots of people will, they, they know I like to answer questions about CI. So they'll be like, hey, Sally, how do I do this? And you're so much nicer to talk to than Steve, so you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve's awesome, but like he's busy and sometimes he gets a little snarky, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mache, so add that into my daily chores. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yep. Thanks so much. Thank you.